Well, hi, all, uh, all you fans of uh, Monroe Live. Um, here we are again, in stand, in standing in front of the, uh, the Mach-E. And once again, I'm going to introduce you to Ben Lindemood. He's going uh, to be the lead on this. And so we're going to be hearing a little bit about the plan, how we're going to be taking it to pieces. And he's going to talk to you about a couple of little interesting features that he's uh, discovered on the, on the car that we haven't seen anybody log into their uh, videos and whatnot. So Ben, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Sandy. Um, as Sandy said, we're going to be tearing down this Mach-E. We spent just over $49,000 on this. This vehicle has just over 17 miles right now, and it's not going to get any more. After we get done filming this video, pieces are going to start coming off. We're going to start with the front, take components out in there, move back to the trunk, remove all of the interior trim in the trunk, and then we're going to start uh, on some closures and some interior. The reason we're doing that, it's a little different than our normal cadence. We normally will focus on batteries and the e-powertrain first because that's kind of the most interesting thing. But we're working with 3IS on this project and we're trying to catch an over-the-air update from Ford. So we want to keep the batteries together as long as we can, keep the vehicle powered up so we can catch something uh, that Ford might push out in the next few weeks. And before you skip off, um, oh. 3IS, um, you remember the, uh, the little discussion that I had with um, the two guys from 3IS uh, a little while ago. Um, they're the guys that we're going to be uh, utilizing here to help Ben out. So this will help us capture more data and it'll also help us a little bit with our customers who are asking for more and more and more out of our, uh, out of our teardowns. So. All right. Thank you, and as we, uh, before we get started, just a few things we want to talk about and point out. One of the big things with this vehicle is there's no mechanical handle. There's push buttons on all of the doors. So if you get a dead battery, you can no longer open your door. So what Ford has done to be able to open the door, they have a little hatch in their front fascia with a couple of leads that come out, and what you would need to do is hook this up to a 12 volt battery or a jump pack and then this will release the frunk. The frunk can then be opened up and you can access your 12 volt battery inside, which that, that would then need to be jumped. Uh, and once you get some power to the 12 volt battery, you can open up the door, the driver's door and the, and the remainder doors. Uh, we did try that this morning. We have a fully charged battery. We tried to jump it, put some 12 volt batteries on it just to make sure it was secure uh, and it is. So if you go to the store, uh, pick up whatever groceries you have, Nobody else will be able to come around and take your, take your stuff out of the front. Um, so that's, that's the first part here, and we'll close that up later. Uh, the other thing that we've looked at is the kickstand on the doors. So when you open the doors, there's a push button, and it automatically opens a few inches. And what there is is there's a mechanical plunger in the door, which we can show you on the other side. So we have uh, our, our uh, we'll trick the door into thinking we're closing it. And you'll notice that a plunger comes out uh, about half an inch. And then when you go to open the door, the plunger will push out the rest of the way. And that's what provides the couple of inches of clearance to start opening the door. And then once the door moves position, it will retract all the way. So again, close the door, the plunger starts to engage, and then when you open the door, the plunger will, will go out the rest of the way. And that is especially useful on the rear door, as there's no handle on the rear door. You open the door, and you have to put your hand behind it. Because the plunger is out, this will prevent the door from closing and pinching your hand until you start to open the door. So if uh, you've got a kid that's running around and runs into the door, you're not going to get your hand slammed into the door. All right, and then we uh, also have noticed a little bit of oil canning that's happening on the rear quarter panel. So it's a little bit more than what you would see in a typical vehicle. Not a whole lot of force here is required to create that oil canning effect. Uh, just something that we've seen on this vehicle as we've had it and been able to poke around on it for a few days. So that yeah. is, that's everything. Uh, do you have anything else, Sandy? Well, um, Patton, one of our guys, noticed that there was a 
fairly major offset on the back of the vehicle. Um, fit and finish wise, um, this was not expected. Down here, you can see that um, it's, it's fairly flush. Over here, um, the gap is um, quite a bit bigger. Um, like I'm looking at uh, the thickness of my baby finger. I don't know what caused, uh, what caused that. Um, it looks like it's pretty good up here, but down there it's a bit of an issue. So even though this is a, um, um, you know, uh, a North American made vehicle, things happen. So anyways, we're gonna be uh, diving into this real soon. Um, uh, ben will be probably doing most of, the, uh, most of the introductions on what we find and stuff. Um, it'll be a little different than Monroe Life because now we're going to have real experts that really, <laughs> really know what they're talking about. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, and um, I was asked again to, uh, to ask if anybody wants to subscribe. That would be wonderful. And we'll be talking to you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.